Last night, Kansas Governor Sam Brownback wore a Wichita State t-shirt over a combination Wichita State-Kansas t-shirt over an Oxford button-up shirt. Dude, Oxford wasn't even in the tournament. And a world without Batman? Yes, says one comic book writer who's imagined a terrifying alternate universe in which villains like the Joker, Penguin, and Duke Basketball can just run rampant and do whatever they want. Please, save us, Dark Knight. It's time to wake, wake up, up, college basketball. basketball. Welcome to Wake Up College Basketball, presented as always by our friends at Samsung and the SUHD television set. John, this is a TV so colorful, it shamed Oregon out of playing basketball for the rest of the year. Quite colorful. Side note, by the way, I know we look like TV salesmen, but in order to buy this TV, you're going to have to go to probably Samsung's website or to a store. Stop coming to our homes. We don't sell them. Yeah, I don't even know how you got our address. Not cool. No, Not no, cool I'm, at all. I'm uh, but what was cool, John, was this Sunday's games, a very nice and interesting way, I think, to end the first madcap weekend of uh, the tournament. Why don't we start with what you thought was the most awesome thing about last Sunday's games. Uh, a lot to pick from. What are you going to go with? Well, Louisville native, so I'm going to start by talking about the University of Louisville, who last night uh, pulled off a convincing win to get into the Sweet 16 for the fourth consecutive year over uh, Northern Iowa. Uh, Montrez Harrell threw down a, a number of like massive dunks. Uh, Terry Rozier finished with 25 points and seven assists. And uh, most meaningful to me and most awesome was that uh, Louisville's uniforms. Did you see them last night? Yes. Including yes. throughout the tournament, <laughs> they've got this stripe. It looks like kind of a failed bumblebee like getup right. that they've got, and it gives the illusion that their pants are always in a state of falling down. Do you think that like? throws off the opposing defense because they're like, oh, I don't want to get too close to this guy. I might have his butt all over me or... Hey, you know what? If Northern Iowa was, was a team full of me's, like, yeah. I would have been like, hey, your pants are about to fall right. down. Hey, hey, I wouldn't be able get, to... And then you get beat down the lane. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great for fast breaks. Right. Like, I would be too busy chuckling at fools to really, like, put any kind of transition That's one of the biggest problems in your game, too much chuckling at fools. Yeah, not enough pants falling down either. Not enough. Just um, awesome in terms of going forward. So we're on a little bit of a break now. Uh, we're looking forward to the Thursday games of the Sweet 16. I'm really excited to see this Xavier Arizona game sure. because Arizona is doing two things better than anybody else in the tournament and they are making free throws, great, and out rebounding other teams. They are out rebounding their opponents in the tournament by an average of 16 rebounds a game. Holy smokes. Like that's insane. And on the other hand of that of this coin I don't know if Xavier's for real yet. They're shooting the ball really well, which is what they did in the regular season, but that was only good enough to get them to you know, the middle of the pack in the Big East. Mm -hmm. If that's going to be enough to get them past this Arizona team, which is playing so, so well right now, is a very big question. But I will say if they can get past the Wildcats, yeah, I'll go ahead and say Xavier's for real. Uh, that leads me to the unexpected element of Thursday's games. Notre Dame is going to the Sweet 16, uh, and that's maybe not a surprise in the sense that this is a team that looked very good all year, looked very good at the end of the year in the ACC tournament, but still, it's the first time they've done this since 2002, and they haven't really played their best offensive game yet, which is, that's the interesting part to me, is that if, you know, I thought Notre Dame was going to come in off their hot ACC tournament really keep it going, but they've sort of stumbled. Uh, Zach August didn't have a great game against Butler. Pat Connaughton hasn't, hasn't really contributed a ton other than at the end of that Butler game. So I, I will be really interested to see if they can sort of take this break time, figure out what's not working about the offense, and get it cranked back up to where it was just a couple of weeks ago. They will have to face a very, very interesting Wichita State team to do that. But before we get to that, uh, what would you say was unexpected to you about about the uh, the Sunday games, rather? Well, unexpected to me, that would be uh, the East region. The East is the first region in uh, since 2004, yeah. actually, that is missing both its one and two seeds. It's oh. really strange. Like, I mean, can you, like since every year has four regions, we're talking about 40 regions in a row where you know either the one or the two survived and all of a sudden the east is wide open uh and the funny thing is even more unexpected they almost lost their three two last night right uh, oklahoma uh very nearly gave one up to uh to dayton 
And uh, the only reason Dayton wasn't able to pull it out is because they went nine minutes in a row God. without a single point. They, it they, was so hard to watch. It like they, really was. They were, they were missing layups. They were making silly turnovers. Oh. Uh, but Oklahoma pulled that game out in the end. Their sequence went miss, turnover, miss, miss, turnover, miss, turnover, miss, miss, turnover. Really bad. They didn't Oof. even get to the line. Ooh. Like, at least when you're struggling like that, at That's... least try and draw a foul. Like, get a point. Like, see what it's like to put one through the net. Start small, but that's they like the do saddest that. poem in the world you just read. <laughs> it really is. Sorry, Dayton, about that. Um, let's move on to meaningful. Uh, there are probably a lot of things you could pick from this, uh, from the Sunday game. Certainly, Gonzaga destroying Iowa maybe comes to mind. But what do you think was the most meaningful result of the Sunday set? Well, I've got to go to Wichita State. I mean, that was, to me, the story of, of Sunday, for sure, if not the entire weekend. I mean, a seven seed, one of the scariest seven seeds you could possibly imagine. Yeah. Uh, you know, over Kansas. Uh, and this is a really interesting rivalry in that, you know, how can you have, how can it be a rivalry if two teams if you haven't... don't play? Yeah, they haven't played <laughs> each other in 22 years. 1993 right. was the last time. And Wichita State, up until a few years ago, went through a, a huge dry spell where they, like, were one and out in the tournament uh, if they got in at all. And uh, I think it's interesting, like, obviously, you know, Bill Self uh, was not shy in saying that, like, oh, no, we, we don't think it's in our best interest to put, uh, put Wichita State on, on our schedule. Uh, like, well, the fates of the NCAA tournament made that decision for you, Mr. Yeah. Self. And I wouldn't say that... And Wichita proved him right. Yeah. Pro at least that. At least you were right, Bill Self. You shouldn't want to play this Wichita That's true. State team it wasn't because your they best. are terrifying. Oh, sure. Yeah. They was, I mean, it was 78-62 it was, uh, until just like a, a three toward the end made it 78-65. Yeah. Uh, it was just, uh, they didn't quite wipe the floor with them, but it was a convincing win. Yeah. The floor is clean enough that you could have guessed so. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll eat chili on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat chili off the floor, John. We've talked about this. All right. Um, before, before we end, let's talk about what I think is the most meaningful game uh, that we're going to see in thir coming up on Thursday. That would be, in my mind, Kentucky facing off against West Virginia. Sure. Uh, because, you know, right now it's hard to pick against Kentucky given how strong and convincing and dominant they've looked almost all season long. That said... West Virginia is averaging 20 turnovers forced a game in this tournament. They are, and all season long, they were one of the best teams with that press pressure defense of making you make silly turnovers, mistakes with the basketball. And that feels like maybe that's the key to sort of getting this Kentucky team uh, off track. At the very least, I think it'll be interesting because even though Kentucky's been very good at avoiding turnovers all year, it does feel it, like it's one of those things that can avalanche. Like, sure. okay, we made a bad pass here. Now I threw it out of bounds here. Now we had a shot clock violation. You know, it can just sort of add up and add up and add up. No and doubt. maybe that's the best way to sort of keep Kentucky from from killing you on defense. If you get that early turnover with it, early in the shot clock, make some points in transition, who knows? Sure. Do you think West Virginia is like the rest of the tourney's best chance? It's so hard to say. I mean, I think Arizona certainly has a, a, a fighter's chance against Kentucky at this point. And what we what we learned from the Villanova game is that it's not always about what your team looks like they're going to do on paper. If you just have an off night and you're facing an opponent who's able to exploit what you are not doing right, anybody can lose in this tournament. That includes Kentucky. Um, let's end on this. Let's let's look at. Gonzaga in the locker room after their big win uh, starts with Eric McClellan doing a pretty nicely executed backflip. Oh, sure. And then Coach Mark Few decides he's going to go with the handstand. <laughs> Couple of points of criticism here. First of all, uh, handstand following a backflip, not terribly impressive. Mm. But what I like about this handstand is he's... I don't think he's ever practiced this in his life. Like, he just decided, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to see if I can walk on my hands and... All, all told, the fact that he didn't fall flat on his ass, big win, I would sure. say. Sure. You know, Christian Leitner, they say, used to be able to do a handstand and walk all the way up and down from baseline to baseline. Mark Few turns out not Christian Leitner. Not quite, not quite there, but, you know, keep practicing. If you keep winning, maybe by the end of the tournament he'll be doing handsprings, cartwheels, a whole floor routine. Sure. Well, that's the lesson of the NCAA tournament is that everyone wins and everyone succeeds. That is incorrect. Uh, he is John Boys. I am Ryan Nanny. This is the beautiful Samsung SUHD television. 
We are going to be back Friday morning. Until then, please, you know, spend time with your coworkers. Make sure you're not fired. Say hello to your family and friends. Do all the things you do when basketball is not in session. Until then, we will see you later. Mm-hmm.